guys, what's up? Aru. I mean, the question answers itself, right? Where's Conria? Well, considering they're called the Abyss Order, then they should be in the Abyss somewhere. Where's Urban Soul? Well, it's most likely somewhere underneath Teyvat because all we can see on the surface are small branches of Urban Soul. And the red sky in the realm of consciousness could mean that it's near the Abyss, so maybe about there somewhere, probably. Is the Spiral Abyss the same as Conria? Well, probably because Conria has this same moon on the 9th and 11th floor of the Abyss, and the only reason why the sky is red here and not red on the actual Spiral Abyss is because of the Cataclysm. This we already know. Now, here's a weird question. Is Conria in the same place as the Ermin Soul tree? The actual tree. Not a dream, not a realm of consciousness, not a metaphor of some kind. Just a tree with a kingdom on the same place as the tree itself. Regardless of whether or not they are both in the abyss or both somewhere else, could it be possible that these two are in the same location? So welcome to another rambling of a madman who likes asking questions. Stop asking so many friends questions. This video is gonna go over as much as I could find regarding Conria's whereabouts, Ermensol's possible location, as well as its relation to Conria, the possible connections of what we know from before and what we know in the current patch, and finally a take on what Conria might have done and what else they could have done if the Bite of 87, I mean the Nail of Vindagnir, did not also happen to them 500 years ago. But before I start this video, again this is a theory based on what I know about Genshin's current lore. So so absorb this information but don't attack anyone else who says otherwise because well different perspectives are really nice and also because the only true heavenly principle Dawe has the final say on what is canon and what is not canon so with that said let's get on with the video now, the best way I can start this theory off is with the number one top dog harbinger of the Fatui named Piero. And we're gonna take this first step into Conria's lore using the Maki Mask from the Pale Flame set. In the Pale Flame set, Piero highlights his lack of knowledge compared to a sage from a past era kingdom. And because of that, he also failed to stop the ruler of said kingdom from tearing away a so-called Veil of Sin, ushering a tide of wrath, destruction, and foolishness. Keywords that I need you guys to think about for now are the sage that Piero tries to convince, the ruler of the previous era kingdom, as well as the kingdom itself that tore away the veil of sin. With that said, let's move on to our first item of interest. So the silver twig has within it three passages of information. First, information on the Ermin Soul's location. Second, a tale from a certain place about putting consciousness into a branch. And third, a legend of a sage from a kingdom established on a tree's roots. And after these three passages of information is a final statement regarding how the Ermin Soul tree passes down its knowledge, as well as a few analogies and metaphors that the God of Wisdom really likes to do. But to continue with Piero's narrative, I want you guys to start with the third passage about wisdom. The silver twig states from its legends regarding wisdom that a sage that was hanging upside down from a tree uncovered the knowledge of reading runes and controlling something called sacred words. Following this, the kingdom that was established on the tree's roots gained a glimpse of the secrets of the cosmos. Taking into account Piero's narrative, it seems that this could be one of the sages that Piero was up against in his mission to convince the ruler of said kingdom. And this veil of sin that Piero didn't want the sages to tear away could be the secret of the cosmos, or of the stars, that the kingdom later gained knowledge of. This glimpse of the cosmos is most likely the main cause of the wrath of the divine to destroy the kingdom, but I'd wager that the sages decided to delve even deeper into this type of knowledge, and found even more secrets of the stars. Secrets that humans aren't allowed to find out, and secrets that can bring upon the heavenly principles. Since knowledge of the stars aren't enough to call the heavenly principles just yet, because we know three so far that know of the sky's history. That being Scaramouche, the Tore, and Nahida. And maybe Piero, but that's not what this video is about. So following the sages finding knowledge, and the sage Piero was trying to beat, we could assume that Piero's narrative and the Silver Twig's narrative about wisdom are both interconnected. But a detail we could also connect with each other is the location of Conria as well as the location of the Ermensol tree itself. The real Ermensol tree and not some realm of consciousness or a dream or metaphor. And this information is also found in the Silver Twig 
twig's description. See, in the very first lines about the silver twig, it says that it came from the center of the world. And in the center of the world was a giant tree that ran across the world. Presumably, Tevat. You could put together that this giant tree is Ermensol and the silver twig that we have is from Ermensol, along with the Ermensol being at the center of the world. But what's weird is that the story about a kingdom finding out the knowledge of the stars was said to have lived on the roots of a certain tree. An entire kingdom living on the roots of a tree. Now, imagine how big a tree would be if an entire nation was to sit on top of its roots. And this certain story is on the same twig that was taken from the Ermensol tree itself. So, the kingdom established on the tree's roots that uncovered a glimpse of the cosmos could very well be Conria, based on what we know from Piero. But the tree of which this kingdom, assumed to be Conria, was established could be Ermensol as well, considering this story came from the silver twig. And the silver twig came from the Ermensol tree, which is at the center of the world. Therefore, conclusion maybe Conria is sitting right on the roots of Ermensol at the center of the world. Now, this does make sense considering many theories connect Genshin, Celestia, and the Abyss with something like Yggdrasil, or the World Tree. Celestia being the branches, and the mortal realm, or Earth, being the trunk, and finally the roots of the tree being something called the underworld, respectively the abyss or conria. This is common knowledge at this point for anyone who regularly watches lore slash theory videos. We're basically just confirming those theories after every patch. But Erminsol sitting on the same place as Conria has its own conflicts. Because Conria was destroyed 500 years ago in the Cataclysm. And if Conria was destroyed, what about the tree that this so-called kingdom was established on? The Erminsol tree, or at least the realm of consciousness that the Erminsol tree was in, had these red skies that we are all too familiar with. The red skies from Conria, as well as the red skies from the Abyss, which we could see from the teaser video, We Will Be Reunited, which popped the recent theories that Erminsol is also from the Abyss. In our chat with Ruka Devara, wait, who's, who's Ruka Devara? Uh, whatever. In her realm of consciousness, she states that when the seven were called to Conria, she wasn't included and had a more important job, and that was to protect Erminsol. Now, unless there's an element I'm missing, there should be a total of seven elements. Right? Nemo, Geo, Electro, Dendro, Hydro, Pyro, and Cryo. So I find it weird that she wasn't included. But if the Erminsol was in the same general area as Conria, more specifically the Abyss, then this statement would make more sense. Since Ruka Devara basically says that the seven were summoned to the nation of Conria, she just needed to go to that huge tree that Conria was on instead of the main city or castle. She also says that the Erminsol you see here was only what it looked like. 500 years ago, hence the red skies. But she never really mentioned what the tree looked like after the cataclysm, and what Conria looked like after it was destroyed. The skies you see in the realm of consciousness are also what it looked like 500 years ago. So that means that the sky that you see here in the realm of consciousness is what the sky would look like when the cataclysm was still occurring. Which does explain why the abyss itself having this dark bluish sky instead of the red sky that you see in the travail teaser as well as the Ermensol's realm of consciousness. And the red skies are possibly a result of either the cataclysm that gold unleashed, the heavenly principles coming down to Conria, or maybe it was forbidden knowledge that was leaked into the world for a second time. But what we really don't know is what happened to Conria after the cataclysm ended. Nor did we get any descriptive information on what Conria looks like today, both from Nahida and from the Ermensol tree. The only information that we have is that Conria was destroyed and the remnants of Conria are now called the Abyss Order. Conria, from the little that we know of, did not have any gods to govern over them. They relied solely on their ingenuity and human knowledge to survive in the Abyss. The one era that we know about Conria was the Eclipse Dynasty, which was the very last dynasty before the Cataclysm occurred. This Eclipse Dynasty had a king named King Ermin. Weirdly enough, he was also the last king of the Eclipse Dynasty and almost has the same name as the Tree of Erminsol. The name Erminsol means Great Pillar and shortening it to Ermin simply means great. Now, 
A character named after a silver tree might jog your memory of a certain princess that was born under a silver tree in a frozen mountain known as Dragonspine, which was known back then as Salvin Dagnir. But we'll talk about that in a bit. For now, let's go back to Conria. One of the key things that they used a lot was Chemia, a form of alchemy specific only to Conria. Because there was so little fauna in Conria and in the Abyss, the main focus of Chemia was creating life. And the greatest breakthrough that the art of Chemia was able to do was to create human life, which was in the form of our friend Albedo. The Rift Hounds and Whelps, Durin, the Black Dragon, as well as the first iteration of Albedo, Nigrido, are also the result of Chemia, with the final result being the Cataclysm, in which gold created and unleashed thousands of abyss creatures into the world. Conria finding knowledge of inscribing runes as well as controlling sacred words can be seen in the many abyss encounters that we've already had. The abyss mages and samachurals as well as abyss lectors speak some sort of special phrasing while casting their spells. With the abyss herald, it seems only says special phrases when entering its elemental shield phase. I mean, this doesn't really sound like sacred words, does it? Annihilate! Die! Perish! Abyssal roar, surging tide. Abyss, grant me new life. Runescribing we could assume we've already seen from that time we saved Andreas all the way to Enkonomia's wall writings on the tower in 2.5 and the chasm's wall writings in 2.6. Everything else like Mona's astrological scribing or the multiple rune stones and rune scripts on the surface could also be included. Conria's runescribing however is more in line with the abyss and whatever else is beyond instead of Teyvat's language based runes. And this secret of the cosmos or stars is possibly what Dainsleaf also calls powers from beyond. Basically, abyss magic or cosmic magic. Conria being established on Erminsul's roots doesn't really sound far-fetched, especially if we put it together with what happened in Vindagnir, with the one difference being that Conria didn't have gods. Conria, from what I understand, was also shot with a celestial nail in which the Black Serpent Knights call the Needle of Retribution, based on the achievement quest Creed Tenebris, or Tenebris. From what I could tell though, the blessing that the people of Vindagnir came in the form of their princess, of which was born right underneath the silver tree that was situated in Vindagnir, which makes it possible that King Ermin was also born underneath some sort of tree, hence his name Ermin. Now back to Vindagnir, the princess could dream of the future and one dream that she had was that the black dragon Durin would come and destroy the land. But it would not come until after their land froze and what seemed like the withering occurred within Vindagnir. But whether or not Vindagnir found out about forbidden knowledge or that the tree was simply freezing to death, we can't really say. I'm more of the latter than the former. But the princess, in an attempt to save this silver tree, picked up the most complete branch and tried to graft it onto another tree. Sadly, the tree withered, followed by the death of the princess. The scribe Uko mentioned all of this in the scribe's box from Dragonspine. Funnily enough, before Uko passed away, he mentions that a new nation without a god would hopefully have the power to stand against the world. This nation is now known as Conria. So if Conria was established on Erminsul, there would still be a problem of their so-called blessing. This blessing, I think, is what the sage had gained while hanging upside down from a tree. And this tree that the sage was hanging from could possibly be Erminsul. Now the blessing, I think, came in the form of knowledge to inscribe runes and to use sacred words. And what followed suit was a glimpse of the cosmos, which was possibly also a blessing. But how do you think they were able to receive such knowledge or wisdom from the Erminsul? Well, maybe it's the same way us travelers receive experience and memories from ley lines. And that's by using resin. Resin even though it is just a simple item used to gain artifacts, mora, and of course, the infamous XP books also have their own lore within them, specifically the Hero's Wits. And the Hero's Wit specifically says that the experience is precious for a pilgrim trying to get closer to Celestia, or in our case, of the Divines. And for someone to get closer to the Divines, they would need knowledge. And that knowledge needs to be in constant and in great amounts. Now, imagine what a nation without a god could do if they had a certain huge tree that offers knowledge every time you give it something in return. Every type of Erminsul tree, be it a petrified branch, a leyline outcrop, 
Shop or Playland Blossoms and even smaller Ermansol trees offer memories from the past which is the best form of knowledge when it comes to understanding and planning for the future. And Conria being as advanced as it could get, creating ruined constructs the size of cities, having black serpent knights that are so damn tanky, which can also use elemental abilities without visions, along with the Abyss Heralds and Lectors from the Abyss Order, all the way to acquiring the knowledge of the stars and be able to use this weird magic only known to Dainsleaf being called Powers from Beyond. Now, where or how do you think they could get that much knowledge? And without a god stopping them, well, how far would you think such lowly humans could go if left unchecked? Well, I suggest you don't think too much because we're only assuming that Kanria is on Urban Soul. So just sit back and let Hoyo decide on what will become of our journey to Kanria and what else might happen in our journey to get there. So there it is, a little theory on where Conria is, where Erminsel is, and what might that mean in terms of what we currently know about everything in Tevat. So what do you think about Conria possibly buying their way to max level everything? Comment below, do you think Conria is at the same place as Erminsel is? Or is Conria and Erminsel located in completely different areas? This video I was really excited to make, not because I wanted to make a theory, but because I was hyped on what Conria might have done to attain such a level of power and it really makes me wonder how far they would have gotten if they really were left unchecked and Celestia didn't come and ruin the party. Regardless whether or not they did live on Ermensol's roots, you really gotta wonder what they did to get such power, knowledge, and level of sophistication and understanding. Especially since they had no gods to guide them either. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and if you want to see more of my content, do subscribe and click on that bell icon to stay up to date whenever I upload a new video or if I decide to stream. If you want to support your boy even more, then you might as well go give my Twitter a follow. It feels good whenever I get a follow. But with that said, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Like, comment if you enjoyed, subscribe for more of my ramblings, and stay mad theorists. Bye!